welcome back to Body, Hand and Soaps. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Um, the whole goal of this channel is to help fellow creators create. My name is Darlene and I am the owner and creator of Body, Hand and Soaps. So today's video is going to be on blending fragrance oils. Um, there is, I do have a bunch more videos coming out on this with essential oils and appropriate uses rates and all that kind of information, but today's video is going to be just on fragrance oils. Now, there's many different reasons why we might want to blend a fragrance oil. Um, first off, I mean the main reason I started blending fragrance oils was I had purchased a fragrance oil, a small sample. Um, they come in multiple different sizes. One second here. Let's see if I have a small bottle. Don't even know if I have any right now. But, I mean, this is a little bit larger than the sample one. Um, I'll usually, if I'm going to try new fragrances, I'll buy them in the one ounce um, container or 33 milliliters. Um, and I do some small test batches with them. Now, one thing about fragrance oils is when you first open them and you give them that first smell, right, and don't stick it right up to your nose because you're, you're just getting too strong of a whiff and you're not actually getting the, the aroma of it. But the problem with a fragrance oil is when you smell it directly out of the bottle, you're going to get those top notes first and you're not going to really smell the bottom notes. That's kind of the after effect. So when I get a new fr fragrance oil that I want to smell, see whether I like it, what product I might want to look it in, uh, use it in, um, I actually purchase these off Amazon very cheap. Now you can use Q-tips. I just find that Q-tips, um, you know, not that they don't work, but these are designed specifically for, they're called perfume, or they call them exactly. I'll link them in the description box below on Amazon. Um, so perfume test strips, okay? And I think I paid 10 bucks and there is 300 strips in here, okay? And it just comes in a little booklet and there's absolutely no smell to these. Okay, so they, they don't hold their own odor, um, so it works really well, um, and they're really not that expensive to, to have. But the very first thing that I will do when I get a new fragrance oil that I would like to try and see where, what products I would like to use it in, or maybe I want to blend it um, to, to heighten notes, things like that, the very first thing I'll do is I will take my little dropper and one of these sheets and I will put a couple drops on this, let it sit for about 15-20 seconds and then I'll kind of waft it in front of my face. The reason that I do that is because I want to be able to actually catch the scent of the top note, the middle note and the lower note. Okay, okay so understanding scent notes um, is one of the things that you have to understand while you're blending. And this is a really good way to start learning your scents. The more you smell them and you can pick them out, the more you're going to learn about what scents go with what for blending. Um, so we have our, our fragrance oils are made up of top notes, middle notes, and base notes. Okay. The top note is that initial scent that you smell right off the bat and that's what I mean by when you when you sniff it directly out of the bottle, you're mostly going to pick up that top note. You're not going to pick up that middle one as much or that base note and you may not even smell that base note. So how would you know what it's going to be like in your product if you don't have the full effect of that? So one thing about smelling scents right out of a bottle is you are going to mostly pick up that top note, a little bit of the middle note, and you probably won't even smell the base note right off out of the bottle, okay? Now, the top notes are usually going to be your citrus notes, um, orange, lemon, apple, um, banana, those types of things. Your middle note is going to be more your roses, coconut, pineapple, nutmeg, maybe some of the really lighter woodsy notes. And that's going to be your, your heart note. So that's the one that's going to just kind of blend the top and the bottom note together. 
And then you're going to have your bass note, which is going to be kind of your platform that all of these notes set on, sit on. Uh, at least that's how I process it in my head. All right, and you're going, those are like vanillas, um, cedars. You're going to have uh, your musks, your ambers, resins, things like that. And that's gonna be that kind of mellow note. So for me, the top note's that very crisp, fresh scent. The middle note is kind of a combination of, you know, the bass note and middle note. And then you have your bass note, which is going to be what's going to just tie this blend all together. So understanding that, okay, um, as kind of your basis for that. And that's why when I get a brand new scent, the very first thing that I'll do to see what products I want to use it in or what it's going to be compatible with. Do I like it? Do I want it to have a little bit more citrus in it? That would be a reason why I would blend a, a, a fragrance oil. If I was to open this up and put a little drop on my sheet and give it a whiff and I feel like that top note disappears too quick in this fragrance for what I'm looking for or maybe there's not enough of that base note to carry through. I can add other fragrance oils to bring that fragrance up to the scent that I was actually looking for. So that would be one reason why we would blend fragrance oils. It could be that you got a fragrance oil that you absolutely just do not care for. You feel that it's too strong. You feel that there's too much citrus. You, Whatever the opinion might be, now we can take maybe if I felt this had way too much musk in it for what I was looking for, I can take that higher citrus note and I can make my own. The main reason I got into blending fragrance oils was because um, I wanted to create my own scents. So when I blend fragrance oils, I know that I have something that is specifically my branding for my company. People might have something close to it, but they're not going to have the exact same blend as me and I become unique. And that's kind of why I got into learning the whole thing of blending my fragrance oils, okay? So that, there's many different reasons why you might want to do this. It, it's a very creative art-like process. So um, maybe you're just really creative and, and you, you need to be creative with your, with your product. Um, there's many reasons why we might. When we're blending, you guys, like I say, it is that art process. So you kind of got to, first of all, have that idea. What are you looking for? What are you trying to create? Are you looking for something that's, you know, fairly citrusy or a little bit lighter on the citrus end but you want to have that nice smooth vanilla um, there's many different options so let's take a look at a few of the fragrance oils and you can do this for candles you can do this for soap you can do this for lotions you can create a blend that you can use as a specific branding scent just for your company um, so a couple examples of what I do um, and you guys when we're working with fragrance oils these are pure essential oils so I'd always suggest wearing gloves while you're while you're doing this uh, to protect your skin they can be quite irritant because they are not diluted at the point um, where their skin safe okay so put your gloves on all right so one of the one of the blends that I have done in the past, I'll go over with you. So this is from Voyager Soap. This is called Cookie Coma. Now when I smelt this, it was just very, very sweet. You can definitely smell the vanilla in here, the vanillin. Um, you can definitely smell that in there, but there's this really overpowering sweet smell to it. Um, so this would be this is a blend that i've done for my candles so and then when you take the cinnamon stick which is also from voyager soap and candle company and when you take the cinnamon it's just it's very cinnamony there's you know it's it's got a very potent cinnamon smell to it so i kind of wanted to mellow that out because when i'm working with candles and stuff and and it's purating through the air you want to have that relaxing, calming smell. So with the cinnamon, it's just really hit you hard and fast and not really that blend that I'm looking for, even though this is a blended fragrance oil and they do have some vanilla in there or vanillin um, and, and some other fragrances in there. 
which is also good to look at guys so when you purchase it and you're looking at blending look on the people the site that you're purchasing it from and see it tells you what the notes are in there so you know how to pair and combine okay but this is just a little bit too strong of a cinnamon smell for me and this is a little bit too sweet of a smell so when you're burning candles you don't want that super sweet smell either because you kind of get that bitter smell from that and then with this being so strong, it's, it's almost headachey, if that makes sense. So I decided that I wanted to blend the two to make a cream cinnamon candle. Um, and it's, it's a very good seller of mine. So this is one that I will share with you today. Okay, so that's an example of how we can change our fragrance oils to match what we're looking for. That way when I purchase something, because I really wanted to do like a cinnamon vanilla candle, but vanilla just, there is enough vanilla in here. When you smell it on the sheet, there is enough vanilla, but we need to sweeten and mellow it out. So I use more of this for my middle note. Vanilla being the base note, cinnamon being that very first thing that, that kind of hits, but it's kind of in between the top and middle note. We just needed something that was going to smooth that process out. So this is very simple to do guys. So let's let's go through this. And simply you're just going to take one of these little tabs, just take it out, okay? And these are just plain white ones. You can get the ones that have the little things and you dip them in. I prefer not to do it that way um, because I don't want to contaminate um, and mix and match with different ones um, the way that you're supposed to do it if you follow directions on lots of people's sites is you will take two of these you will dip them you know the same distance in each of these so it's kind of a 50 50 and then you'll have two separate ones you leave them sit for the 15 20 seconds and then you pick both of them up together and you wave it in front of your face I find that I get a better sense of what the smell will be if I just use a dropper and just use one. So I'll take a small amount okay, of the cookie coma and I'm just going to put one drop on the end of there. Okay. I will take a second clean dropper and I just kind of let it run so it just is it a blob on there and it's soaked the bottom part of the tip of that. You guys probably can't see that because it doesn't really change color too much. I'll take a little bit of the cinnamon. Once again, one drop. Okay. And then I just let that sit. And we're going to actually give this a good 15-20 seconds for this just to blend together and you can use two separate ones that's perfectly fine as well and then once I have this soaked in 15-20 seconds don't stick it right up to your nose and smell it's just too strong you want to be able to pick up that top note middle note and bottom note so you're just gonna Try and wave it in front of your face and get that kind of in the whole air space in front of your face. Just kind of like when you go into smell perfumes or anything like that in a perfume store, you don't spray it like on yourself. You spray it in the air and you let it kind of give it a second and then kind of waft it towards yourself. Same kind of concept, right? And then you can tell how much you need of each on there. So this is a 50-50% blend, okay? So I've got one drop of the cookie coma, one drop of the cinnamon. So when I smell this, this still smells a little bit sweet to me and not quite enough cinnamon because this is going to be um, cinnamon cream. So I want a little bit of that cream background, but I want that cinnamon note. So I'm actually gonna put one more drop so now I have two drops of cinnamon and I have one drop of the cookie coma. I'm going to give that a few minutes to soak in. Kind of blend together. 
Most information will tell you 15, 20 seconds. Sometimes I'll walk away for a few minutes and then come back because I just really want to make sure that the blend actually does blend well together. And that to me has that cinnamon with that cream background that's coming in. So it's kind of mellowed out that cinnamon, but it's alleviated that super sweet smell from the cookie coma. And this would be the scent blend that I would do for my cinnamon cream candle. And you can definitely pick up the cinnamon so you're not losing that, but you've got that mellowing out scent in behind. And I really like this blend. It's one of my best sellers. So that is called my, this is what I call my cinnamon cream candle. And it is a cookie coma and cinnamon stick from Voyager soap and candle is the purchase there okay so that's one of my blends that i created a long time ago it's very basic very simple and when you're first starting out i would always start out simple you, there is no rule of how many fragrance oils you can blend together i like to stay between you know two and three fragrance oils because if you get that fragrance oil too complex because remember these are already blends it's not just one scent they have blended them already so that's why i always suggest you go onto that website you see what's in it make sure it's compatible um for my patreons you guys will have for the ones that are on there um I'll have a whole bunch of information with this video on there. So, you know, fragrance oil, everything you need to know. It'll have the description of how to go about blending. It will also have a chart on there for your fragrance wheel. Okay, I'll just pull that up on the screen right now. So if you look at the fragrance wheel that I have up on the screen right now, um, this is a good idea if you just, you haven't got the stuff here and you're ordering stuff but you want to attempt to do a blend pull up the fragrance wheel and take a look at it so the fragrance wheel um, is just a diagram okay of different scent families your main scent families are going to be your floral notes your oriental notes and your fresh notes and your woodsy notes those are the four groups on the fragrance wheel and that is going to be your families and then you have your subfamilies. so what scents fit into those subfamilies? okay so for instance in the floral notes as you guys can see on the chart that's up here you have your basic floral notes your soft floral notes and then it kind of goes into your floor oriental floral notes and on the other side you have your fruity and then you have that's kind of between your fresh and your floral notes so there's kind of a, a blend there um, and the same with say woodsy notes right you have your dry wood your mossy wood uh, your woodsy smells and your woodsy smells go between your oriental notes and your woodsy notes okay okay so now anything within those families the subfamilies off of that family okay after the main family those subfamilies will always blend well together okay they are in the same family it will always blend well together but you have to watch that because when you're blending things that are so close and sent together you may not make much of a difference and you may become overpowering now one way to use this wheel is if you look at the woodsy notes directly across from it is the floral notes okay so those floral notes and the woodsy notes because so whenever you go directly across on this wheel those notes are complementary to each other so we know that woodsy notes are very complementary to floral notes we know that oriental notes are very complemental to the fresh notes okay so you could draw a line straight across and take a floral oriental and take an aromatic note okay or you could take a soft oriental oriental and a citrus note and because they're directly across from each other the likelihood of those being complementary to each other um, is very likely this wheel was designed by a guy that did I believe it was in Europe years and years ago to help perfume makers 
create blends and stuff like that. So that's where this wheel comes from. There is a copy of it on my Patreon and it does go through explaining um, the different notes and some of the scents that are in those notes for you. So the ones that are on there, please go take a look at that. And it does break down into how you can create a triangle and have three that are complementary to each other and things like that. Um, so do your research and get that information before you go and order a bunch of stuff thinking you're going to make this great scent. All right, so that's my suggestion to you. Also on the Patreon site, I do have a worksheet that I created for myself and I'm sharing it with you guys on Patreon. And basically, it's just a worksheet that I keep in and then I will put this into my blend recipe book. So when I go back to make this, I make it exactly the same as I've done. Now, one of the mistakes that I've made is I've just gone ahead and started blending. And then by the time I got done blending, I went, oh man, I really like that. And then I'm just like, just wait a minute, what did I do? So one thing that I will do when I'm making a new blend is I will make sure I am taking my notes for how much, um, how many drops I'm using of which type of fragrance oil. Um, and even the company that I purchase that fragrance oil from to make sure that I can have the exact same scent every time. Okay, so that is, it's pretty simple to do these blends. And, and a lot of it is going to be just being creative and, um, you know, we learn by doing. So, all of you probably have some fragrance oils at home. Um, you can use Q-tips, as I said. You don't have to use the perfume strips. I find that they actually waft the scent a little bit better than Q-tips, but you can use Q-tips. Um, I will link the information to the things that I use down below. Um, on, I order this stuff off Amazon. It's not that expensive, but either way. So what are some other scents that we could do? Let's take a look. Um, Oceanus um, is another scent that is very floral and fresh um, is what I get from that. But that's directly out of the bottle and I'm really not smelling that base note. So keep that in mind. Um, but this is one that by itself, it can become very monotonous, I find. And that's just my opinion. Everybody is going to have different scents that they like. But I find this just becomes two over the same scent, 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 scent. And I, I want to change it up so that you get that initial freshness coming off of it, but then you have that base note that helps carry it through. So different scents that we could put with this to kind of have that, that base note. I could add, now vanilla I don't think would go very well in this. And keep in mind to keep track of your vanilla and um, content. Remember what vanillin, that might be a video I've got to do so you guys actually understand what vanillin is, but it will change colors of candles, soaps, and different products if it's too high of a percentage. So if you're missing, mixing a lot of fragrances that have vanillin in it and you've brought up that property of vanillin, it may react different. When we're making soaps, I mean, do a small test batch first. See if that fragrance oil actually works in that soap without seizing it or calling, causing rising, things like that. So when we do start to blend, you really have to be doing your testing and, and making sure that it functions and works properly. Does it hold well in soap? Do you have a nice hot throw from a candle? Those types of things. So remember, there's a, there's a whole process to this. I'm just showing you how to find the scents that you like. You're still going to have to do the testing. So vanilla isn't one thing that I would like to add to this, but one thing that I find goes really good with this because this already has floral notes in it, and one of the blends that I've created for another one of my candles uh, is to use the Oceanus and then use the Sweet Pea Oil to kind of brighten that freshness up. So I've got that, that floral that's already in here with that nice fresh scent. Okay, and then we have more of the floral just bringing it, elevating it up that little bit more. And I find that this works really well. And I do this a 50-50 blend. Okay, um, another thing you could do if you have a lavender fragrance oil, 
Um, peppermint goes really well with lavender. Um, but you could change this up. I purchased this one fragrance oil. Let me see if I can find it. Lavender Woods and Honey. Now, I really like this fragrance oil, but when I use a lavender, I have a lot of customers that love lavender. It needs to be a dominant scent in any lavender products I make. However, just that too much premeration of just straight lavender I find overwhelming. Um, so you want to kind of mellow it out. This is a little bit light on the lavender, but it has that nice mellowing effect. Therefore, I use just a straight lavender oil and mix it with this and I do a 50-50. So that's another two fragrance oils that I mix together to bring this to the the fragrance that I was looking for. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, honey cream. I find this to be um, a very once again, it's got a lot of base notes in it, the honey cream, right? So with the base notes being so powerful, um, it, it almost gives you a headache afterwards. Now, I really like the honey cream, but because once we get to that base note, and this is one that I've played around with quite a bit, you know, it, it's got that very sweet but then that pungent underneath smell comes in. So I like to mellow that one out um, with my cashmere cream, which has kind of that musky undertone to kind of mellow that pungent undertone. And I find those two work really well together. Um, this is a fragrance uh, I bought, Yuzo, I think that's how you pronounce it. And I do not care for this fragrance at all. I find it very, it, it's just so citrus. This is a fragrance that I'm not a fan of. I don't find it works well in any of my products. Uh, you can, so this is the only bottle I've bought and I haven't even used half of it and I've had this for months. Um, but I have done some blending with it and it works really good to bring a citrus note into something. Say I had um, patchouli, okay? Patchouli and citrus go really well together. You'll find a lot of recipes of patchouli orange. So this is one of, patchouli is one of my top sellers. However, if everything's just patchouli, we, it becomes once again that overpowering. So. I will actually mix, I don't have my orange out right now, but I will mix my patchouli with orange and I heighten the orange flavor using um, the yuzu, yuzo, yuzu. Um, and it just really brings up the orange scent with that strong patchouli background. So that I use in there. Now I do that at a way different ratio. I don't have the recipe in front of me, but just trying to go from memory here. Um, I do this, two drops of this, two drops of orange, and one drop of the yuzu, yuzu, yuzu. Um, and I find that that works really well because this is very citrusy, but I don't, it kind of just makes, brings that orange forward a little bit and then you have the patchouli as your base note. So you're getting that bright citrus and then you're getting kind of a blend of the citrus and the patchouli together in that finishing note and I really like that. So as you can see, it's not that complicated to blend your fragrance oils. Um, but I wouldn't, you know, like I wouldn't take and have a container and do, you know, 15 grams of this oil, 15 grams. That's a lot of essential, or sorry, a lot of fragrance oil that you could be wasting. Okay. If the scent doesn't work out, you've wasted a lot. So I would not go and do large batches. I would use a Q-tip or you could use one of the scent sticks. Okay. And do some testing. It's one drop, so you could do a lot of testing. Oh, I don't like that. Let's move on to another ratio. You know, say the 
that you didn't care for that scent okay well let's let's take this scent out I still want to make a cinnamon but let's put in some pumpkin chai and the cinnamon stick together um, pumpkin chai is once again a really good scent that you know I like a lot just on its own and I do have a candle that I make just with this scent but maybe you want to elevate it and have more of that cinnamon chai you know um, scent in there well you could use the cinnamon stick and the pumpkin chai together to create what you're looking for so when it comes to blending fragrance oils you guys um, really the sky's the limit there is no number that you can only blend one or two or three just remember you start getting really complicated you're bringing in so many different formulas because each of these are already a blend here's not a single scent okay they'll all be blended already the only one concern that i would make sure that i'm documenting is flashpoint all of these fragrance oils have a different flash point um, now most fragrance oils you're going to see around the 200 but there is some fragrance oils that have a lower percentage um, some fragrance oils 120 is their flash point understanding what a flash point is simply the flash point is where this becomes a combustible so when we're using it in candles when we're using it in cold process soap or heated process soap we can reach that flash point which can become hazardous once we get close to that flash point we can also burn off the scent and get a more of a bitter smell from it so we want to try and stay away from that flash point so my basic rule of thumb let's say that i had a most fragrance oils are around the 180 to 200 so say i had one uh this is cashmere cream it's got a 200 Fahrenheit flash point and then I have this lavender woods and honey which is 163 Fahrenheit is its flash point I simply go with the lowest flash point okay so the flash point of this blend if this is what I was creating is going to be 163 so I need to keep that in mind would that be acceptable to use in a candle can I only use that in body products that don't become heated so that would be one thing that I would consider and the easiest way to deal with that is just always go with the lowest flash point of whichever fragrance oil has the lowest. That is a safety concern, um, especially in candles, you guys, because we're selling those candles and people are using them in their homes and we don't want um, fragrance oil to become a combustible. So that would be my only concern. And then use an average of your your usage rate right so the usage rate of this um, is 25% okay for cold process soap and for cold process soap um, the usage rate of this is 27.75 so once again I take the lowest usage rate and that's what I'm going to use and that's just for safety concerns so don't exceed the lowest usage rate of the fragrance oil you're using and don't exceed the lowest flash point other than that that is your safety concerns for your fragrance oils okay another thing that you might want to keep in mind is like I said earlier the vanillin that is in there because you may mix one that you've used in the soap many times before um, such as sweet pea there is zero vanillin in this one therefore i know it's not going to change my soap or my candles brown um, when i'm making my formulations however if i blend it with something that has vanillin in it i have to consider the vanillin that i've added to that okay so to me those are the three things that i would keep an eye on and track there is you know the sheets available for the ones that are on my patreon i will list the supplies down below that i've used and really you guys all you have to do is be creative have a have use that thought process and come up with something be unique be yourself okay um use that fragrance wheel to help you out use your tracking sheet to help you out and just come up with your own blends okay 
hopefully that guy that helped you out some guys and just comment in the comments below if there's any further questions that I may have missed throughout the video I'm getting I'm trying to catch up this week on answering all of my questions so get your questions in there and I will get back to you as soon as possible but it's pretty straightforward fragrance oils is pretty easy compared to an essential oil there's a lot more considerations when we're doing essential oil blends compared to a fragrance oil stick within your flashpoint range stick within your usage rate range and consider the vanilla so you're not wrecking a whole bunch of product and start small don't waste a whole bunch of fragrance oil doing this blending one or two drops you don't have to use you know 10 15 grams of each one to to get the scent from it okay and uh yeah so any further questions you guys just ask them below hope you guys have a great day